Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Finally, the day we've been eagerly awaiting for weeks has arrived, and the launch of the third orbital flight test happened, ending in a way we never expected. The launch day began with the team at Starbase conducting final systems checks and assessing the weather. Initially, there were concerns about wind speeds, but conditions improved, allowing the launch sequence to proceed as planned. Several hours before the scheduled liftoff, the fueling process commenced. As the clock counted down to T-60 minutes, teams conducted final weather checks, ensuring conditions were favorable. Given the green light, the launch director initiated the propellant load. By T-45 minutes, the Starship and its super-heavy booster were being fueled with liquid methane and liquid oxygen, a meticulous process watched closely by engineers and space enthusiasts alike. As the countdown reached T-10 minutes, final system checks were completed. The launch control team verified that all technical and safety parameters were met. Just before the engine's ignition, the water deluge system was activated, unleashing approximately 350,000 gallons of water at the base of the Starship. This massive outpouring served a dual purpose. It was designed to absorb the immense heat generated by the rocket's engines and to mitigate the acoustic shock that could damage the spacecraft, the launch pad, and surrounding infrastructure. By flooding the area with water, it created a barrier and cooling effect that significantly reduced thermal and acoustic stress. This system's effectiveness was evident as the Starship ascended into the sky. The launch pad and its immediate vicinity remained intact, free from visible damage. At T-0, the activation of the Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster generated an immense 16 million pounds of thrust, propelling the Starship and its booster off the ground. This level of thrust is about twice that of the Saturn V rocket which historically has been one of the most powerful rockets ever built for the Apollo moon missions. At t plus one minute into the flight, the vehicle reached the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure, known as Max-Q. This critical phase occurs as the spacecraft ascends through the atmosphere at increasing speed, resulting in the highest aerodynamic stress on its structure. Successfully navigating through Max-Q is crucial as it tests the vehicle's design and integrity under the most extreme atmospheric flight conditions. By T plus 2 minutes and 50 seconds, a pivotal moment in the launch sequence occurred, the hot stage separation. This maneuver involved igniting the Starship's engines before separation, a technique that simplified the process and enhanced efficiency. During the first Starship launch, traditional stage separation was used where the lower stage would shut down before detaching from the upper stage. This old method wasn't as efficient because it momentarily stopped pushing the rocket forward. This method resulted in a momentary loss of thrust and efficiency during the critical phase of ascent. Hot staging fixes this by starting the engines on the upper stage of the Starship before it separates from the lower booster stage. This method keeps the rocket moving forward without losing any push, making the launch more efficient. It's like keeping your foot on the gas pedal while shifting gears in a car so you don't lose speed. This approach isn't entirely new and has been used in Russian rockets, but it was a big step for SpaceX to include it in their system. It required adding special vents and shields to the booster to handle the heat and pressure from the engines firing so close together. Following its separation, the Super Heavy booster began its controlled descent back to Earth. As the booster re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, its grid fins, those crucial components for controlling the descent trajectory, sprang into action. These fins moved constantly, adjusting the booster's course with remarkable precision, guiding it towards the intended splashdown zone in the ocean. The aim was for a soft splashdown in the ocean, a method SpaceX has used for tests to minimize the risk to people and infrastructure. 
As the booster approached the ocean, the onboard cameras provided a live feed of the descent, offering viewers around the world a front row seat to this technological marvel. However, as the booster neared the ocean's surface, the signal was lost. Loss of signal is not uncommon during re-entries due to the intense atmospheric conditions the booster encounters. Yet, from the trajectory and performance observed up to the last moment of transmission, it was highly probable that the super-heavy booster executed its splashdown as planned. Meanwhile, the Starship upper stage continued with its mission, executing additional engine burns to adjust its orbit. The engines were shut down successfully shortly after these adjustments, marking a key milestone in the flight sequence. However, during its mission, there were moments when the communication with the starship was temporarily lost, though it was regained shortly after. At about T plus 45 minutes into the flight, the starship began its re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. The re-entry phase is particularly challenging due to the intense heat generated as the spacecraft encounters atmospheric friction. Impressively, the onboard cameras continued to transmit images during this phase, allowing those watching to witness the spacecraft enduring the harsh conditions of re-entry. Eventually, signal was lost once again. It's speculated that the Starship was lost during this phase, a scenario that, while disappointing, was not entirely unexpected given the complexity and challenges of such a test flight. Recalling the explosive outcomes of the first and second test flights in 2023, the progress made to this point was significant. For this third launch, the role of the FAA was notably different, contributing positively to the process. Previously, during the first and second Starship launches, SpaceX faced significant delays due to the FAA's licensing process. During the second test, SpaceX's vice president highlighted that Starship had been ready for its next flight test for over a month, but was held up by the lengthy review process required by multiple agencies. This situation led to frustrations within the private space industry, pushing SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Virgin Galactic to collectively urge the Senate for improvements in the FAA's approach to the space sector. They highlighted the need for a more streamlined regulatory process and and emphasized the FAA's need for increased funding to adequately handle launch licenses and enforce regulations. This concerted effort was driven by the realization that the pace at which the commercial space sector was innovating far outstripped the capacity of the regulatory environment to keep up, especially in the face of growing competition from state actors like China. The executives from these leading space companies argued for the necessity of increasing the FAA's resources to at least double its current capacity to ensure the regulatory body could more efficiently manage licensing rocket launches. The FAA's announcement of the launch license for the third Starship mission on March 13th might be seen as a positive outcome of these efforts. This move by the FAA, coming after a detailed investigation into the previous flight, and considering the feedback from industry leaders, suggests a potential shift towards a more supportive and efficient regulatory stance that could benefit future space missions and the commercial spaceflight industry as a whole. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.